Hello YouTubers and welcome to another edition at the uh, Museum of Traffic Control here in the back uh, storage area. Uh, today I'd like to uh, show you the insides of another electromechanical from days gone by. This is the uh, Eagle Signal Traffic Controller. Uh, Eagle Signal was a company that was based out of Moline, Illinois, Davenport, Iowa. And uh, they were a fairly large uh, company in making traffic control products. This model is the EF20, so uh, let's dig inside and see how it works. Okay, so here we are inside the EF20 cabinet. As you can see in this box at the top, we have three dials. This is similar to other electromechanicals in that they would have three different options for uh, traffic patterns or uh, cycle times. You have typically your normal daytime cycle uh, in the on the left dial here you would have uh, rush hour or uh, north-south traffic flow in your middle dial and an east-west on your right dial what this would create is three different cycles uh, if you had a rush hour in which uh, there was heavier traffic on the north-south road you could you have a longer interval of green time and uh, same thing with the east-west road, depending on time of day. So basically these three dials were controlled either uh, manually or by a time switch, which was located usually in the door of the cabinet, or by it remotely from a central office, such as the police station or things like that. So they were able to uh, control each dial by the, the time of day. This little box here, what's nice about it is that it can be removed Basically, it would be unplugged at the bottom, and then there is a little, if you can see, there's little uh, hooks on the sides that helps it to lift out. This way these control cabinets can, uh, the inside boxes can be replaced if there was a problem to them. Let me open one up here and I'll show you what the uh, inside looks like. As you can see, the uh, cams and contacts were located under the dials. Made it kind of convenient to all be accessed from the front. Uh, as you can see, when the dial comes around and, and touches a contact, it engages this uh, plunger here, this uh, magnet, and causes this to go up and down and advance the cams one position. So similar to the uh, electro, uh, Econolite that we explored in the last uh, edition. So again what you would do is break out the cams for the sequence of lights that you want on and off and uh, create the order of the sequence. You'd have a chart that would you would use to uh, mark off the different places you want to break out a contact, break out a, uh, a piece of the cam. And uh, this would all stack together, and uh, you can see the little contacts there for the green, yellow, and red lights. As they would drop, they make contact. As they raise, they break contact. And typically over in the door, we had the latching relays. Again, these are uh, connected with the dials, that if you would switch the dials to a different one, it would uh, engage that it won't uh, turn over until at the zero mark on the dial. So this way the, the lamps stay in sequence. So, I'll open this up and show you behind here. Okay, so behind the box we have a timer here. This is the time clock for the flash. So typically at night, for night flash at 11 o'clock until about 6 o'clock, the signals would go into night flash, which was usually a, a flashing yellow in the main street direction and flashing red on the side. So basically this switch, when it engages, the uh, Eagle controller had the more unique uh, way of waiting until main street yellow 
was produced before it would go into flash. Many of the other controllers would just suddenly go into flash, whether it was green or red or any color. But this one uh, had a was wired in such a way that it would not go into flash until we were in Main Street Yellow. And then the other wiring here is all the signal connections and various jumpers that you can use to uh, change how you want it to uh, be configured. Uh, we have your, similar to the Econolite, but a little bit larger, your flash transfer relays. So these will switch the unit into flash mode manually by the switch down here. Let's see if I can, camera a little tight here. There we go. So you have your flash, your signal off switch and signal on switch. Your auto hand switch for again for a police officer you can switch it to hand and then be able to control it. This happens to be a remote starter but you could use any kind of a push button to make it work. And then the Eagle controller had an on off switch as well. And then here's your dial selector for dial 1, dial 2, dial 3. You could switch it all to remote, which would be from a uh, remote location, or the time clock, which would be mounted on the door. So you had that choice. Also in this unit, I have a solid state flasher for the red and yellow flash. Uh, a lot of the, in the older days, it was an electromechanical, uh, similar to the one I showed you on the Econolite that had a cam that flash that uh, rotates the cam motor. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tour of the Eagle EF20 cabinet and controller. It's a great example of uh, control systems that were used for many years here in the United States. I uh, don't know how you found this channel, but I hope you uh, enjoyed what you've seen. Please like and subscribe here below, and uh, give a thumbs up. And uh, we will continue with uh, more episodes in the future on uh, great examples here at the Museum of Traffic Control. Thanks for watching.